I would like to take a moment uh, to remember a friend, Clay Cross. Um, so this video, I, I don't have a script for This is a blog. Um, I don't usually script these. So if I, I ramble or if I get a little emotional, um, I just want you to forgive me. On Tuesday, uh, December 11th, 2018, at 1.30, uh, Clay Cross passed away. He died due to complications to his liver, his kidneys, his heart. If you don't know who Clay Cross is, he is a very good friend of mine. And he's been a contributor to this channel from the beginning. Uh, you've seen him in, in many games we've done on this channel. And he is the voice of Hidakasada. Hidakasada has finally arrived in court. I first met Clay through role-playing games. Uh, we were both part of an organization called Mind's Eye Theater. Back then, it was called the Camarilla. Uh, we played vampires. It's a fun time. Uh, there's a lot of drama surrounding it. And uh, Clay caught some bad drama. Um, we didn't actually become friends during that time because of that drama. But later on, after we both left and we both had some, some time to, to look back on that, we did become good friends. We, we played a game called Legend of the Five Rings, which is on this channel a lot. <laughs> it's what started this channel. And uh, we, we had a blast playing it for over five years together. And even after that ended, we consistently hung out together. We consistently had, had a great time together. He didn't have that happy of a, of a life. He was adopted. Uh, he, he didn't feel, he felt like other people were happier than him. Um, he was plagued from, from birth with a slew of, of mental and physical problems. He was blind, legally blind. Uh, for a long time, I would drive him to the grocery store and we would go grocery shopping together because he could no longer drive because he was disabled, uh, had some mental problems. He went to therapy. Uh, he always tried to, to find happiness in his life and he worked hard to get there. He did go to therapy. He, he took his medication, even if he hated the medication that he took. Uh, and he complained to me ad nauseum about the stuff he would take. Um, he, uh, he went to school. He went back to school. He studied to be an anthropologist, and he loved that and would talk to me about that all the time. And he did uh, uh, search out his, his birth family at one point. One of the reasons we'd hang out so much is because he was really happy when he hung out with me. Um, we would talk about philosophy and politics and religion and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and we, we evolved together. When I first met him, uh, I was deep into libertarianism. And as we talked and as we grew together, I, we moved away from that. I moved away from that. I don't know where he was politically when I was a libertarian. I'm pretty sure he was liberal during all of that time. And me, I, I moved more towards him and... And it actually, um, it helped me, it helped me in life. It helped me keep friends in life. <laughs> These conversations we would have. Because, you know, being a libertarian makes you a bit of an asshole. <laughs> Clay always tried to be the best person he could. He always wanted to do the right thing, even if he failed even if it wasn't the right thing. <laughs> he was he was very human in that. We all make mistakes. Um, he... 
<laughs> we went through many girlfriends together. And even if we had a bad girlfriend, the other one would still like support us, support each other, no matter what, and, and kind of uh, egg each other on to keep to keep doing, you know, keep keep with her, keep at it. Uh, except for one, and this is a little story that that I have. Um, he was going out with this girl. I forget her name, and even if I did remember her name, I don't want to remember her name. She not good. <laughs> um, I had a cat named Punk Monkey. He was uh, a beautiful Siamese, Tonkinese, whatever you want to call it. And when he introduced me to this girlfriend of his, I introduced her to my cat. And he's got an interesting story in and of himself. Um, when he was a kitten, he was starving and haggard, and my mother found him when he walked into her yard sale. And he hated women, but my mom was hell-bent on taking care of this cat. She's like that. She, will, she wants to rescue animals. But as soon as it got healthy, it hated her. <laughs> it hated my sisters. It hated all women. <laughs> So I ended up with the cat, which I named Punk Monkey. Well, Howard named him Punk Monkey because uh, he would hang off of you and generally had a bad attitude. He was, he, he lived up to his name. <laughs> he was a Punk Monkey. Well, upon hearing this story, Clay's girlfriend relayed me a story about how at the same time, she had, her cat had a batch of kittens that looked like my cat. And instead of doing a responsible thing, she went out and deposited these cats throughout different neighborhoods. These kittens, these defenseless kittens. And she was convinced that this was a right thing to do because she saw the great home I had given my cat. I was furious. And Clay, he didn't keep her around any longer. <laughs> Some of the happiest times we had was when me and Clay, we would uh, uh, sit up all night talking and he would, uh, he would drink his 40s, his, his steel reserve. During these long nights, uh, we would sit up uh, and talk, and he would tell me about his school, and he would he would continue to pressure me to go back to school, and eventually, I did. <laughs> we introduced each other to a whole slew of new friends. Uh, James Bird, who was on my channel for a while playing games, uh, he I met him through Clay. These past years, being in Alaska, I, I didn't talk to Clay as much as I wanted to. I went back down to San Antonio, and I was able to talk to him on the phone, but he wasn't doing as well as he could, and he couldn't come out to see me in person. And uh, that, that... For, for over a year, he's been with this new girl. Uh, and he's been very, very happy with her. And I'm very happy that he got to have that at the end. Um, Clay hit the bottle pretty hard in his life. Uh, he had, like I said, some psychological problems. And he used alcohol to self-medicate. And we would talk a lot about his uh, his drinking and what it was doing to his body. He said that he was he was fine with it. He knew the consequences. Um, he felt better about his life and everything when he was drinking. And um, 
There wasn't much I could do to convince them otherwise, though I tried. Um, other people, of course, had the same conversation with him. With the woman he was with, um, I was told that he had some second thoughts about it. I don't know. When, when you have a good woman in your life, when you have other people who, who deeply care for you, it puts another light on, on your own actions. If you're, if you're doing yourself harm, if you're engaged in self-harm, um, just remember that your life isn't always going to be like it is at the moment you, you're at. And I know it, it sounds cliche, but seriously, think about the things you do to yourself and don't do anything you, you might regret future you has to deal with the consequences of your actions. Um, I can't imagine what she's feeling. Um, and my, my heart goes out to her. My heart goes out to Clay's family. My heart goes out to all of Clay's friends, um, people he's known through the life, people he's become estranged to, uh, anybody who, whose Clay's life has touched. I'm proud to be a part of Clay's complex and interesting life. And I hope something on this channel of his that he did um, resonates with you.